Oregon football just landed another major commitment in the 2024 class. We're breaking it all down on today's episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. And we're back. Like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. I'm your host, Max Torres, publisher and lead editor of Ducks Digest, covering the Oregon Ducks over on Fan Nation, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. We got some breaking news here for Dan Lanning and the Ducks on the recruiting trail as 2024 Orem, Utah tight end Roger Saliapaga has committed to Oregon. Saliapaga is a four-star prospect out of the state of Utah, and he chose the Ducks from a top five that also included the Alabama Crimson Tide, the Auburn Tigers, the Tennessee Volunteers, and the in-state Utah Utes as Dan Lanning and the Ducks continue to heat up here on the recruiting trail ahead of the early signing period, which is set to begin on December 20th. So we're going to be breaking down this commitment from all angles. As we always do, we're going to be talking about the impact on the recruiting trail. We're going to be talking about a little bit of evaluation, give you guys a sense of what kind of a player the Ducks are getting and then a little bit of his roster outlook at the University of Oregon, looking ahead into 2024 when he will be arriving on campus and when the Ducks will be making their move and their debut season in the Big Ten Conference. So what do you need to know about Roger Saliapaga? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you're watching here along on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Taurus, we're going to be throwing on some film on the screen. This is his junior film because he hasn't posted a full senior season highlight reel just yet. He might still be playing. I'm actually not too sure. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure that their season's over right as I said that because I know that um, Isaac Wilson and Corner Canyon captured a, a state title recently. But if you guys are watching on YouTube, do me a huge favor and smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, show me some support. We are on the road to 3K subs and uh, just getting to do what I love here, covering the Ducks on the recruiting trail and on the football field. So, Roger Saliapaga, this is a big dude, six foot five, right around 220 pounds. He recently took some official visits in the month of November, and that started off with an official visit to the University of Oregon for Oregon's game against USC. That was his second trip back to Oregon in the fall, taking an unofficial visit out to see the Ducks in September for their beatdown of the Colorado Buffaloes. But since his official visit to Oregon on November 11th, Sally Apaga followed that up with two SEC trips out to Tennessee and to Auburn for the Iron Bowl. The Auburn Tigers gave the Alabama Crimson Tide all they could handle, but they came up short in the end thanks to the heroics of Isaiah Bond and quarterback Jalen Milrow. So now Roger Saliapaga is a duck. I did put this prediction in uh, back in October, so it was a prediction that I felt pretty good about for a while now, just because we have the film on the screen, we're going to get into a little bit of an eval. I think the first thing that jumps out to me is just the versatility with Sally Apaga. A lot of the times through his recruitment, he's been referenced as a wide receiver tight end. I think he more so fits that tight end mold just because of his size. Six foot five, 220, 225 pounds, a really big dude that you can obviously add some weight to his frame once he gets to the college level. But you see him lined up, and, and he is lining up all over the place uh, in some of these packages for, for Orem, sometimes getting flexed out wide, uh, and then also maybe being used as a traditional tight end as well. So I don't think he necessarily runs amazing routes. He's not going to be snatching ankles necessarily, um, not the cr most crisp routes that you'll see, but that's not to say he's not a good route runner. I'm just saying I think that more so lends itself to him 
being a, a tight end rather than a receiver. But when I look at his tape, I can't help but think a little bit of Terrence Ferguson, Oregon's current tight end that the Ducks signed out of Colorado in the 2021 class. He was a guy that was flexed all over the place. So maybe we see a little bit of Terrence Ferguson in his game. I think that Roger Saliapaga is probably a little bit more athletic when I think about him and seeing what he can do on the on the field and, and on the tape. Definitely a big play machine. At least that's what you see on the highlights. Definitely a guy who can high point the ball. He can make the one-handed grab. He's got some great hands. He can go over the middle, make you miss, and he's got some home run speed to boot as he takes this pass to the house for Orem. So I think this is just a really versatile guy that is going to be a big time component to Oregon's 2024 recruiting class here. And now that Oregon has Roger Saliapaga, I think you're seeing a little bit more balance and a little bit more of that strong close, that strong finish that I've been talking about here on the podcast for Dan landing on the ducks here in the 2024 cycle. You'll remember that Jackson Ford, the Melissa Texas tight end, decommitted from the Ducks recently and that uh now that he has chosen to look for a new spot you see Sally Apaga come in so the Ducks did have a need at that tight end spot and they are still in search of some playmakers uh aside from Sally Apaga so now that he's in the fold Oregon now has two tight ends committed in the 2024 recruiting class along with A.J. Pugliano from North Medford, Oregon. So the Ducks are feeling good about their haul at the tight end spot there. And I think that this, just to get into some of the recruiting impact for Oregon here, this was a big win. You, you look at the schools that they were in contention with. Alabama was listed on that on the his top five finalists, but I think this really came down to, to Oregon, Tennessee, and Auburn. He did take a visit to Utah, his official visit to Utah. Just so happens that that was the same weekend that the Utes played the Ducks, and the Ducks stormed into Salt Lake City and did basically anything they wanted to Kyle Whittingham's Utes, which is something that not many teams have been able to do. Oregon included the last time they went out to, to uh, Utah in 2022, 2021, excuse me, things didn't go their way. So that was obviously not the way that Oregon wanted the, the game to unfold under Mario Cristobal, but it's a different era now under Dan Landing, being able to go on the road in a hostile environment, win big time games. And Sally Apaga had a front row seat to that. So he, he did have some praise for Utah, but I think with Oregon's inroads into the state, Utah continues to emerge as a recruiting pipeline for the Ducks on the recruiting trail. The Ducks obviously got Noah Sewell, uh, the the former Oregon linebacker from Orem High School in the 2020 recruiting class. He was a former five-star guy that is now on the Chicago Bears. Panay Sewell, also out of the state of Utah, obviously. Uh, Noah's older brother. And then you have Jackson Powers Johnson. Who, who signed with the Ducks out of Corner Canyon High School in the 2020 class, 2021 class, excuse me. So, and Jeffrey Bossa as well. That's a that's another Utah guy that, uh, that the Ducks have playing right now on their squad, a starting linebacker. So Utah is definitely going to be a school, or not a school, sorry. It's going to be a state that Oregon continues to prioritize here on the recruiting trail. And it's not necessarily just in the trenches like your offensive and defensive line. A lot of big time uh, Polynesian players out of the state of Utah. That's kind of where I feel like they've been known for. But they're a state that's starting to produce a lot of guys at a variety of positions. You got Isaac Wilson, who I just mentioned. He's going to be playing his college football for Utah, staying home. He's a, a really, really talented quarterback that I've gotten to cover in person a couple of times. So there, there's some really intriguing talent out of the state of Utah, and it's definitely good if you're a Duck fan that, that Oregon to see Oregon involved in, in such a talent-rich state and one that I think probably doesn't get the recognition that it deserves on a national scale. So that was so that's a little pipeline note, if you will, for Oregon here in, in the 2024 class. Um, he is, I want to say, Sally Apaga is the first player out of the state of Utah for Oregon here in the 2024 class. Um, 
just double checking my notes here and it looks like he is. So that's, uh, that's good that Oregon's sticking around there. What else can we talk about? I think with this 2024 class, uh, right now, Oregon's class ranks number seven, according to 247 Sports. This is uh, using the class calculator tool to get the most updated rankings that we can. The Ducks currently sit with 25 verbal commitments in the 2024 recruiting class, so spots are continuing to get tight, which means every commitment that the Ducks are taking is incredibly calculated and certainly someone that I think the Ducks view as someone that can certainly make an impact. So Oregon continues to solidify themselves as one of the best recruiting powers in college football with this addition. I talked to you about some of the schools that that Oregon was going up against to ultimately win out in this recruitment. Definitely got to give a tip of the cap to Drew Maringer. He was one that that was really big in this recruitment along with with Dan Lanning and Steve Steve Haunga, I think is his name. He's another another member of this Oregon staff um, that I was told was involved in this recruitment. I do have um, I do have a quote from Roger, but I think I might have closed the window. So give me a second here to to pull this one up. I, I spoke with Roger uh, ahead of his official visit to Oregon, just talking about his interest in the Ducks, telling me, "quote I always loved Oregon. I was there, I think, five times now. I always love going back to Eugene. Oregon's still so me, still high up there on my board. I love the coaches." What Coach Lanning is building up there, I really love. So Oregon was in a good spot for a while here, and I think that this is just another another move that I think you kind of saw coming for a, a while now, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a big addition in, in such a defensive-heavy class, right? I think that's one of the bigger, broad points that we can make here now that Roger Saliapaga is in the fold. Oregon has a really, really good class, but it's no secret that a, a majority of their guys are on the defensive side of the ball. The three highest commits, the three headliners in this class, Aiden Breland, defensive lineman, Elijah Rushing, edge rusher, Braden Platt, a linebacker. Your, your highest rated skill guy in this class on offense is Jordan Anderson, and he's a four-star receiver out of Newport Harbor in Newport Beach, California. So we know that this is definitely a defensive heavy class. And I think that makes sense for Oregon, especially with the priority that they're placing on the defensive line, on the front seven, in the linebacker core, and beyond. But Roger's a guy that I'm excited about now that he is committed to Oregon, seeing that the Ducks do have a need at tight end. Obviously, we talked about Jackson Ford choosing to back off of his commitment, so that created an obvious need. But if you look at the roster as well, I wouldn't be surprised moving forward, looking ahead into 2024, if Terrence Ferguson maybe chose to test the NFL draft waters. I think that he has had a bit of a quieter season than I expected after being number two on the team last year. Terrence Ferguson was in total receiving touchdowns, second only to Troy Franklin with, with, these new, with the season that Troy is having and with some new guys that have come in. Uh, chiefly among the chief among them, Tez Johnson, who is closing in on a thousand receiving yards, and Bucky Irving out of the backfield, Jordan James as well. I think we've seen a little bit of a decline in Terrence Ferguson's role, but you also have Casey Kelly, who came in from Old Miss, and the resurgence of Patrick Herbert. So um the Ducks do have the opportunity to return all of their tight ends in 2024. Uh, just based on eligibility, from my understanding. I think Ferguson Ferguson does have another year if he wants to use it. Patrick Herbert should have another year, given his injury history, some season-ending injuries, as well as the COVID year, if he wants to come back. And then Casey Kelly, I think, would, would be another guy that could come back should he choose to. Hasn't had a huge role in the offense, but has made some impact plays nonetheless. <clears throat> and then you also have Kenyon Sadiq, the young, true freshman out of the state of Idaho, he is another guy that the Ducks are are slated to bring back to return, that is, in 2024. And I think something that is positive, if you're a tight end that's going to be playing for Oregon, Kenyon Sadiq has gotten some pretty decent uh, playing time as a true freshman. And I think that the conversation with him coming to Oregon was maybe that he was a little bit undersized, needed to put some weight on, but he has definitely made the most, I feel, uh, of his snaps as a true freshman. 
So the tight end history at Oregon has been great, but going into the 2023 season, going into this season, it was a little bit up in the air. You knew you had Terrence Ferguson, but you lose Cam McCormick, you lose Maliki Matavau, and um, to, to Miami and UCLA respectively, and you knew you had a good guy and, and Patrick Herbert, but he just played his first full season last year after just brutal injury luck. So all that to say that tight end needed to be a position of priority for the Oregon offense in this recruiting cycle. And Drew Maringer has definitely made that a priority and continued to execute that uh, position at a high level, continue to execute talent acquisition, acquiring top talent. That's the word I was looking for. The, the word kind of a word salad, pardon me, but this is a big time addition. Make no mistake about it. Now let's look a little bit ahead and talk about some of the other guys that Oregon is kind of looking at because the, the question here in 2024, of course, now that you have a big commitment, the question always becomes what's next, who's next. And we're going to get into that in just a second while I take a little sip of water here. I'll tell you what, I wish I was taking a sip of Snapple, but I do not have a Snapple with me on this episode. If you guys have been rocking with me for a while, you know that it is a dream of mine to get the show sponsored by Snapple. So not really sure what steps I even need to take to do that. That's my favorite drink ever, but an occasional shout out can't hurt, right? But let's talk about who's next, who could possibly be next here in the 2024 class as we are... 19 days away from the beginning of the early signing period. Hey, let's start at the tight end position. Uh, Jaden Fortier out of Tualatin, Oregon, number one player in the state, landed an offer from the Ducks last week, last weekend, I should say. And he's verbally committed to Arizona State. Kenny Dillingham and the Sun Devils going to be making his way out to Tempe this weekend for his official visit. But that was an offer that once it went out, I didn't have a lick of intel. I hadn't heard a single thing. But in my in the back of my head, I was thinking, I think that might be a flip. That's a, that's a guy that I think could certainly find his way out to Eugene to play his college football. And it was kind of funny how it all came together because the Ducks already have three commitments from in-state guys. We're talking um, Trent Ferguson. Fox, uh, not Fox Crater, excuse me, Devin Brooks and, and AJ Pugliano, but they were all ranked below, um, all ranked below for tier. So why doesn't the number one guy in the state have an offer? But uh, all is forgiven now because he does have that offer. And I think that that's going to be something that, that's going to be an offer that gives him something to think about. Do I, what do I want to be a part of? Do I want to try to turn things around at Arizona State with Kenny Dillingham? Obviously inherited a very difficult situation there. Or do I want to be a part of an Oregon program that is like sky high right now and has one of the best offenses in college football? So haven't been able to interview him. There's not really any new details that have emerged from that recruitment just yet, at least not publicly. But that is certainly a guy that's worth keeping an eye on. Number one player in Oregon, six foot five, 220 pound tight end out of Tualatin, Oregon, one of the best programs in the state on a yearly basis. Other guys to keep an eye on. You got Jericho Johnson, the 2024 defensive lineman in the Adidas All-American selection out of Fairfield, California, our Mio High School. He is set to make his college commitment during the early signing period on December 21st, I believe is the date for him. And he's working from a top four of Oregon, USC, Washington, and Utah. Again, I've had, this is a guy that I've had my pick on Oregon for quite a while now. He still hasn't taken his official visit to Oregon, but he was in town for an unofficial visit last weekend when the Ducks took on the Beavers in the, their rivalry game. That was an unofficial visit. So the fact that he hasn't taken his official visit, I think bodes very well for the Ducks, for Tosh Lapoy, Tony Tuioti, and Dan Lanning on the defensive side of the ball. We know how important that final visit is when it comes to recruiting. And he told me that Tosh Lapoy wanted to get uh, Jericho Johnson told me in an interview that Tosh Lapoy wanted to try to keep Oregon as that final official visit um, in his recruitment prior to making his college commitment. So 
I'm told that December 8th, which would be, I think, next weekend, is when he is supposed to be making it out for his official visit. We'll see when that happens. But I told you guys, as we kind of looked ahead to the finish line in an earlier episode of the podcast, there's going to be that big weekend where a bunch of verbal commits for Oregon come in, and then they also try to bring in some of those some of those um, top targets that are currently uncommitted. And I think now that Roger Saliapaga is committed, Jericho Johnson is probably the guy that you feel the best about in terms of who could be next to hop in the fold for the Ducks. Another big interview that I was recently able to get um, wasn't with the recruit. It was actually pretty interesting. Uh, It was an interview about the recruitment of 2024 Boise State wide receiver Gatlin Bear out of Burley, Idaho, but it was with his head football coach, Cameron Anderson. Uh, He was really, really kind and gave me some of his time in an interview. And I kind of just asked more or less kind of the same questions or, you know, to the best of your ability, uh, what what are your thoughts on um, Oregon's, on Gatlin's interest in Oregon? What kind of schools, which schools do you think he's kind of uh, working from? What's his timeline looking like? A whole bunch of great stuff. That's all on DucksDigest.com if you want to get the full quotes from him. Uh, my story, I think, is just called the latest Oregon and Wa- and the latest with Oregon and wide re- Boise State wide receiver commit Gatlin Bear. So that was a, an interesting, different dynamic of an interview, but he gave me a lot of really good stuff. Um, I think the biggest update there is that it's down to three for Gatlin Bear. You got Boise State, and you got Oregon, and you got Michigan. So, kind of the big thing. Some of the other big updates. At a, on that recruitment, took recent unofficial visits out to both Oregon and Michigan, to Oregon for the USC game, to Michigan for their rivalry game against Ohio State. Both those trips went very well from what I was told. And as far as a timeline here, he is an early graduate from high school, but he's going to be taking that two-year mission trip. And I was told that he's going to be going to Dallas, Texas for his mission And he doesn't leave until February, which actually gives him some flexibility as far as his signing and uh, making his final decision. So that was one of the interesting things that I got out of that interview is that he could sign during the early signing period if he wants, or he could choose to wait on it a little bit more and sign during the February or the traditional February signing period as a not many recruits do nowadays. Roger Pleasant did it last year. I was at that commitment and that was a huge one. So he's certainly a guy that you got to keep an eye on. The other interesting updates that I got from that one, um, both Oregon and Michigan will be going in home for recruiting visits with Gatlin Bear next week. I was told multiple members of the Oregon coaching staff are expected to be making that trip um, to, to see Bear in Idaho next week. So I think Oregon's got a really good shot there. Like I've been telling you guys, they're still trying to find some wide receivers or just some offensive weapons to add in this class. And I think Gatlin Bear has to be near the top of that list. 6'3", 195, dude can flat out go. 10.15 in the 100 meters. I think this coach told me a 4'2", in the 40. So we are talking crazy speed. I think the other options that you got to keep an eye on for Oregon, we already talked about Jaden Fortier. Maybe Jeremiah McClellan, the Ohio State wide receiver commit out of St. Louis, Missouri. I think he's someone to keep an eye on. Hasn't been too much buzz that I've heard about him linking him with the Ducks lately, but we know Oregon has stayed involved there, and he came to Eugene for an unofficial visit the same weekend the Ducks played Colorado. So that's another big name you got to watch for. And I think the last one that I want to mention comes on the offensive line, 2024 IMG Academy five-star offensive tackle, Jordan Seaton. Jordan Seaton looks like he's going to be making his college commitment during the early signing period. And the expectation in my mind is that he's going to be getting back out to Eugene for his official visit with the Ducks sometime before he makes that final college commitment. And I think that Oregon is in a really good spot here. Might even be quietly or not so quietly leading for the IMG Academy standout, not a school that Oregon has had a ton of success recruiting uh, historically, but it is worth mentioning that Seton did transfer over from St. John's in Washington, D.C. prior to his senior season. And who else was at St. John's? Dejon Riggs, Dejon Dink Riggs, Oregon's 2024 running back commit. So maybe there's a little bit of familiarity there, I would assume. 
and uh, and maybe Seton wants to block for Riggs at the next level once again. So you have a lot of schools, not a lot, but some big time schools that are still involved with Seton. Oregon's right there in the thick of that race, along with the likes of Alabama and Florida. I want to say he took recent visits out to Tennessee and Colorado as well, but he seems like he is nearing the finish line as we start to look ahead to the early signing period. But let's see what else. I think Nate Frazier is another guy you still got to watch for. As weird as it sounds, he hasn't been out to Eugene, to my understanding, to my knowledge. But I think the Georgia running back commit out of modern day, Nate Frazier is certainly one of the top flip candidates for Oregon here in the 2024 class. Dan Lanning is trying to do something special, as is Oregon, the entire staff with this recruiting class. And they want it to be the best class in program history. And I think with what they're doing, they are on track to do just that. So keep an eye out for Nate Frazier. Would not surprise me in the least if he were to make it out to Eugene for one more trip, just to make absolutely sure uh, that he is kind of crossing his T's and dotting his I's, making sure that he's finding the right spot for him. But I think those are kind of the the latest rumblings now, but we're going to have transfer portal stuff. We're going to have, Pac-12 championship game coverage over on Ducks Digest. We're going to have recruiting interviews, recruiting updates. I got all of that for you over on DucksDigest.com. So make sure you guys check it out. If you want to find more of me, make sure you lock in with me on social media. I am at Sports on both Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Oregon Football Max Taurus. And make sure you share the Ducks Dish podcast with your friends, with your family, and with other Duck fans. I love it when you like it, like the video for me, and uh, just keep tuning in. I really appreciate your guys' support, but Dan Lanning and the Ducks, stay hot on the recruiting trail. Roger Saliapaga is a duck. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and until next time, thank you for listening to another episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast.